listening to Big World Network. Just Kill Me, Season 5, Finale, Part 2. Written and read by Wendy Herman. Mom? I went to Levi, but he backed away. Mom, what's going on? Honey, I... You and Uncle Rip have something in your brains? I was stunned for a second. That was not the question I expected. Oh, um, you don't... Uh, I didn't know how to respond, and I gestured awkwardly back to Ty, trying to form a coherent thought. Don't you want to know why your mom and I were hugging? Ty blurted out. I gave him a surprised look of exasperation. He shrugged and forced a weak half-smile. I turned back to my son. Levi, we've been meaning to talk to you about, well, a lot of things, but... Mom, it's okay. I already know you and Uncle Rip are boyfriend-girlfriend. He rolled his eyes, saying it like it was a small matter he wanted to get out of the way, before we got to the real controversial topic of the implants. I'm sorry, honey. I stepped toward him and he let me touch his arm. Were we that obvious? My teenage boy was much more perceptive than I gave him credit for. Well, yeah, but I already knew. Dad told me years ago. I snapped my head to meet Ty's eyes and we both froze. Once I could feel the blood pumping through my body again, I took a deep breath. What do you mean Dad told you years ago? It was a long time ago, Mom. Can you answer my question about the things in your brains? No, I said firmly. Not until you answer me. He rolled his eyes again before reluctantly responding, something I was starting to realize teenage boys did to their parents a lot. He said that you and Uncle Rip are supposed to be together, and that he was just taking care of us until you remembered. That son of a bit, I shot Ty a look of daggers, and he stopped just in time. "'What else did he tell you?' I asked, looking back to Levi again. "'I don't know. Nothing.' "'He said that once, years ago, and you remember it?' "'He couldn't remember to close the door when he was in the bathroom reading, but this he retained?' "'Nah, he used to say it almost every night. When he was home, anyway. Whenever he would tuck me in.' "'Why would he tell you that?' I asked him, and then a thought occurred to me. Did he tell your brothers? I don't think so. He said it was my job as the oldest to help them understand it some day. He really was taking this all in stride. Why are you not freaking out about this? I demanded, trying not to freak out myself. I told you, I've known for years. Since Dad seemed okay with it, I guess it just made sense. He took a deep breath and cleared his throat loudly. Now, back to my question. Yeah, yeah, brain implants, yes, we've got them. Now, why did you never mention this? It never came up. You have brain implants? I shushed him and made him sit down at the foot of the dining room table. I sat down in the adjacent chair and Ty came to stand behind me. I leaned toward Levi and said in a hushed tone, I don't think your brothers need to know about that. Not until they're older, anyway. Much older. I closed my eyes and breathed in deep, then exhaled, opening them again when I realized something. Where are your brothers, anyway? You're supposed to be watching them. They're fine. I put in a movie. Ty walked around me to the doorway and peeked around the corner. He turned back and nodded, signaling that the two youngest were, in fact, watching a movie in the living room. What kind of brain implants? Levi asked excitedly, but quietly. Seriously? I was still in shock. You've known that Ty and I were going to end up together for years, and the implants never came up? Mom, you need to move past that and tell me about the implants. He said it so calmly, and matter-of-fact, he sounded like an adult. I craned my neck to give Ty a puzzled look and got a chuckle and a shrug in response. I shook my head back and forth, looking down at the floor for some clarity. Ty sat next to me and sighed. Levi, he began, your mom and I volunteered for a government project 20 years ago. They put computer chips in our heads to make us into, well, killers, assassins, like in your video games. Levi was silent, frozen for a few seconds. 
Then his face broke into a huge smile. Cool, he burst out. Ty and I both shushed him at once, and I stood to check the status in the living room, but the other two were enthralled in Howell's moving castle. I sat back down and looked at Levi intently. All you need to know is that we're not assassins anymore, and that we're fine. We just want to live our we just want our lives to go back to normal. I trailed off. You mean like before you became an agent? That surprised me. I had avoided thinking about whether I was going to stay with the FBI or not after this mess was all over. In fact, I'd begun to think the mess would never be over. I was currently on administrative leave in light of everything that had happened, and Pixley was waiting to file anything until until we could figure out what the hell to do about Dunwaddle. My mind was the poster child for adult ADD, tuned to about a hundred different channels and changing at random. I tried to focus. Would you like that? To go back to when I was home with you guys? I don't know. You were different back then. You seemed happier when you started training, like you were finally a real person. What do you mean a real person? I was a real person when I was just your mom. I know, I know. I just mean that before, you were my mom, and you were awesome, but maybe becoming an agent completed you or something. I don't know. That sounds stupid, but that doesn't sound stupid at all, Ty replied. I think your mom knows exactly what you mean. Ty put his arm around me, and I smiled at him. Okay, if you two are going to get mushy, I'm leaving. Levi was rolling his eyes again. I turned back to my teenager and gave him a gentle smack on the arm. Don't worry. We'll try to refrain from being mushy in front of you. Levi gave an exaggerated sigh of relief. And you're really okay with us, I gestured to Ty and myself. Yeah, Levi said. You and Dad together, it was kind of weird, you know? Yeah, I sighed. I know. As Levi trotted out to the living room to join his brothers, he turned suddenly in the doorway. You want me to talk to the kids about all this? I did my best not to snort, but... Not yet, big man. We'll let you know, Ty said very seriously. Levi nodded and resumed his course to the couch. I made it to my bedroom before I let myself have a laugh. My oldest son was handling it all so well. It was just what I needed to keep me going. A little bit of something good. I walked around the bed to my nightstand and plugged my phone in to charge. Immediately I saw four missed calls from Trevor from earlier. Oops. Ty had gone out to the van to retrieve his phone, and within minutes he joined me in the bedroom. I kissed him passionately, and then headed for the shower to get ready for the day. If the past weeks had been any indication, I probably wanted to be dressed for whatever today would bring. I had no idea how right I was. After Ty showered, we headed downstairs to spend some time with the boys, who were just finishing up their movie. When everyone was dressed and fed, we decided to go out to the backyard. I set out cleaning up the neglected landscaping while Ty played some catch with the boys. I heard my phone ring from the bedroom window a few minutes later, but chose to ignore it. Then it rang again. I ignored it again. Not two minutes later, it rang a third time. I told Ty I'd be right back and ran inside and up the stairs to answer the damn thing. It had better be Trevor with some good news. I took the stairs two at a time and navigated around my bed to the nightstand. I picked up the phone and hit the answer key. The next thing I knew, I was standing in the backyard again, staring at Ty and the boys throwing the baseball around. What the hell? Who was on the phone, babe? Ty had run awkwardly over to me, with Rowan wrapped around one of his legs, giggling. If I had been in my right mind, I might have given Ty a tense look at him, calling me babe in front of the boys. But I was most definitely not in my right mind. I had no idea who'd been on the phone. And I had no idea how I'd gotten back outside. I don't know. Ty reached for my hand, and I didn't understand what he was doing until I realized I was clutching the phone. He took it from me and looked at the screen. It says the last call was from unknown, he said, doing a poor job of pretending not to be concerned. Then Ty hit the call button to dial the number back. He waited with the phone at his ear for a few moments, but then shook his head. 
no one had picked up. Are you okay, Mommy? Blaze had come over to join the party, and he did look concerned. I had to make him feel better. Ty and I would figure out what had just happened to me later, when we could be alone. I took a deep breath. I'm fine, baby. I ran my fingers through his thick red hair, and he smiled. Ty looked at me, and although I was afraid, I relished in the worried, protective look he was giving me. For the most part, I was a strong, independent woman— but sometimes I loved knowing I had a strong man to take care of me when I needed it. Blaze ran back to Levi, and Rowan unwrapped himself from Ty's leg to join them. They were getting out the horseshoes to play a tournament. Are you okay? Ty was close to me now, and I could see he was waiting for me to lie and say yes, so I decided to be honest. No. He put his hand on my elbow. What happened? I ran up to answer the phone. Then I was back here. I don't remember anything in between. Ty thought for a moment. I could tell he had nothing, but he wasn't about to say it aloud. It's okay. It's probably just the implant screwing with your head. Or, I guess, the information, since the implants are most likely gone, according to Brain. He forced a smile. Let's enjoy the day, and we'll talk about it after the boys are in bed, okay? I was good with that. I felt just fine. As a matter of fact, I felt great. The rest of the day went without a hiccup. Blaze had won the horseshoe tournament and got to pick what we had for supper. No one complained when he chose burgers on the grill. That evening, after putting the boys to bed, we quickly realized there was really nothing to talk about. Neither of us had an explanation except for the usual strategy of blaming the implant. It was all we could come up with, and it made sense. I tried to let it go. We kissed and said good night, after Ty made me promise to wake him if I had any other strange memory lapses. As I rolled over, I knew I wouldn't be able to sleep. I watched the clock on the nightstand click slowly from 10.32 p.m. to midnight, to 1 a.m., to 2 a.m. At 2.15, my phone quietly vibrated. I glanced down and saw a voicemail notification. I picked up the phone and played the voicemail, slowly bringing the phone to my ear. I closed my eyes and heard a strangely familiar voice. I opened my eyes, and I wasn't in bed anymore. In fact, I wasn't in my bedroom anymore. I looked around frantically, taking in the tiny, bland, empty apartment I was standing in. I was alone. I took a few deep breaths and tried to clear my mind. Something felt heavy in my arms. I looked down and saw a large assault rifle. Instinctively, I knew it was an AK-74. The question of how I knew that dissolved as quickly as it had formed. An alarm sounded and I raised my hand. I was wearing a large watch and the timer was going off. I silenced it and walked to the window in front of me. It was eleven in the morning and my target was almost in position. I placed the rifle on the stand already set up in front of the window and checked the sight on my weapon. 60 seconds and my mission would be complete. I carefully placed my finger to rest on the trigger and waited. Listening to Big World Network.